Good morning, welcome to worship. Please rise as you are able. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life to Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation for this saving mystery and for this water. Let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea to the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In less and bad places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, quench our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, the honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lita was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. 
Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in the green pastures, and leads me beside the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your eyes and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. A reading from Revelation, the ninth chapter. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white and white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might to be our, our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and will worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. So how 
Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. This familiar nursery rhyme is one most of us know by heart. It teaches us that most things that are broken stay that way. That's life, nothing we can do about it. But if we truly lived our lives with this added, the world would be a very dark place. No healing, no hope, no promise of better days. Illness, brokenness, and evil would rule the day. Thankfully, we are God's people, and we know that there is joy amidst the pain. There is healing after illness. There is the promise of new life after death. I don't know about you, but lately I'm feeling a little bit humpy dumpy We look at a country broken and battered by unending social and political upheaval. This time it's the Supreme Court that sits on the verge of reversing decades of legal precedent. Then there are COVID levels in the stock market rising and falling like a roller coaster. Across the world in Ukraine, war rages on as we look helplessly from the safety of our homes. The pain and ugliness never seems to end, does it? Many weeks I'm amazed at how the Sunday readings sometimes are the exact words that I need to hear. And this week is one of them. In Acts, the community of Joppa is gathered to mourn the loss of one of their own. They honor her memory with stories of her service to their community. Peter comes to this community of believers, one much like our own, one that has tasted the painfulness of illness and the bitterness of loss. Peter raises Tabitha from the dead to assure them that the resurrection miracle continues. For us, Easter was a few weeks ago, and the miracle of the resurrection may have grown old or seemed so far removed. Yet Jesus is still in our midst to declare that eternal life is the order of the day. We are reminded of the resurrection miracle again in the comforting words of the 23rd Psalm, that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, Lord. You comfort and guide me, and evil does not win, goodness and mercy win, and thanks be to God for that. This familiar psalm's words of strength and mercy are needed today more than ever. In Revelation, we hear the multitude of nations singing praises to the Lamb of God, words that are often part of our liturgy as we sing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Angels declaring that we will hunger and thirst no more. The sun will not strike us, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd, and he will guide us to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. These words from Scripture are used at many funerals when grieving and loss consume our thoughts. Times such as these when we need to be reminded of the resurrection miracle of our God who protects us and wipes away all of our tears. Lastly, we get to our gospel today from John. The people want Jesus to tell him, Who are you? They are still on the floor. They have not put together all that they have seen and heard from Jesus. Voices of the crowd, voices of the past, voices of detractors block them from hearing. The one voice that they need to hear. The voice of their great shepherd. The one that gathers them and raises them up. The voice of Jesus who knows them and loves them like no other. 
This week we know that the one voice still speaks louder than any protesters or invaders. That one voice that soothes each person who is wounded physically or emotionally. That one voice that carries over the cries and gunshots and tears. I know that I needed to hear this message today, as I do many weeks. To hear that the one voice still gets louder and stronger each time violence, hate, and disruption explode in our world. Each time God's people cry out in fear or pain, waiting for justice for all. Sin, evil, and brokenness are part of life in these United States. And sadly, they are one common denominator that we share with our brothers and sisters around the globe. But our good news, our Easter story, is that one of the other common denominators we share with those around the planet is that Jesus' voice is always, always present for the faithful flock. No matter what other voices try to compete, Jesus' voice is still first and last one on the scene. And it is always the loudest, if only we have ears to hear it. John's words remind us who and what Jesus is, our Lord and Savior. They call us to reflect on how he showed his deep love for us as he carried our sins, our burdens, and our fears all the way to the cross. We are God's people. We are the beloved sheep who hear his voice above all the others. The one true voice that calms our fears, quiets our tears, and holds us in those dark places where we sometimes find ourselves. Whether they are places of our own doing or places that others move us against our will. I don't know about you, but I continually need reminders of this. Just as often as I am reminded that human life might be a little like Humpty Dumpty, precariously perched on a wall, brokenness one move away. Our good news today and each day is found in the words from Scripture, words that teach us what nursery rhymes cannot, that there is healing, there is hope, there is promise of better days. Injustice, illness, brokenness, and evil will not rule the day. Scripture teaches us that God's people are not shattered beyond repair, for we hear the voice of our shepherd leading us toward the promise of the resurrection. As Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. Let us pray. Dear Lord, give us ears to hear the voice that gathers us together at God's table in the grace and mercy given to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Christ, our good shepherd, promises us that we will have an abundant life and then backs up his promise by laying down his life for us. We give thanks for our good shepherd who blesses us with goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen.
Free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle Shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation, especially Joseph, Nancy, Linda, Barbara, Pam, Haley, Grace, Jean, Jim, Christina, Rob, Dave, Jackie, Steve, Teresa, Erin, Cameron, Philip, Sebastian, George Funds, Betty, Karen, Savannah, Mary, Phoebe, Jimmy, Janet, Lynn, Susan, Amy, Charlotte, Kim, Meredith, Karen, Peter, Judy, Debbie, and Judy. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding, as did Julian of Norwich, whom we commemorate today. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, in your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the earth and Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceful way, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true pastor Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thank you. 
this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, please take a look at your pink uh, sheet. Uh, it has the Zoom link for the yoga class and our two Bible studies, one at 1 o'clock on Wednesday and the other Monday night, uh, which is more of an adult uh, discussion forum. Our budget and constitution hearings are coming up this week, uh, so please uh, attend uh, one of them if you have any interest in getting more detail about either of those documents, or if you have any questions or concerns um, as what goes to the uh, annual meeting on June 12th. Uh, we'll not be able to have any changes at that point. It'll be an up or down vote. So if you have any questions or concerns, please bring them to the meeting or please contact either Kurt about the um, Constitution or Mike about the budget beforehand. Our men's uh, fellowship uh, meets this coming Saturday at 9 a.m., so please join them in the kitchen in the lower auditorium uh, for a breakfast for that. Um, just a planning note, our summer Bible study will continue at the beach this year in July and August. Wednesday, we will be at Sunken Meadow, so if you'd like to join us for that, please set aside your Wednesday mornings, 9.30 to about 11, uh, to join us for that um, Bible study. Uh, our baby shower luncheon is coming up quickly on May 21st. If you would like to go to that, please let us know. Call the office or speak to Vicar Jean about that uh, so that we can plan on how much food that we need. Uh, we got a generous grant through Fridays to help uh, pay some of the costs. Um, and um, all of the uh, proceeds, anything that we get from the luncheon, will be going to Helping Hands. Uh, so please, I invite you to uh, take a look at the items that are needed and whether you can come to the actual luncheon or not. Uh, please see what you may have and what you can donate. We are also looking for baby clothes, size zero, I guess, whatever, creamy, up to five feet. If you have any gently used clothing uh, that you may have, please uh, bring that in as well. Are there any other announcements? Okay, then please uh, rise for our litany for Mother's Day. Women come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Everyone here was born from a mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. For every woman who is working day and night to rear her children right now. Thank God for the mothers of today. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God for the women who are For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank God for the mothers who are today. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but that was not to be. Thank God for the women who are for those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. For all women who chose to remain childless, may their choice be respected and honored. For all women who support and encourage each other, ensuring that each child is cared for and loved. Almighty God, with a mother's love, you have blessed us with the joy and responsibility of children. Bless all women who provide motherly care for your children as they raise our precious gifts from God. Give them gracious love, calm strength, and patient wisdom that they may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything that we do. Amen.
God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.